going on. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, we start to discern what God's will is. And if we feel right about it, and our conscience is clear when we're doing something, and we know that God wants us to move, he wants us to move forward, he wants us to build uh, with him his kingdom, he wants us to, uh, to see people saved, he wants us to see people's lives change for the better, and he wants us uh, to see people's, uh, well, just people being following God, really. When we have all that going on, we know we're in God's will. And we know that we need to, uh, to know the word so we understand God's will. So if you've been studying the word for you know, any length of time, certainly within you know, six months to a year, you're going to start getting to know. If you're reading the New Testament and finding out about the Lord Jesus Christ and, and learning about what he said and, uh, and how he thought and, and his attitude towards people, and, and God and, and the Father and everything else. You know, it doesn't take long before you start to get to understand a little bit about God and what God really wants from you. Now, you know, it can take many years for you to refine that, but basically within three to six months, you know God is speaking to you. If you've been going to church for more than two or three months, you should have God's... If you're going to a Bible-based church and you're having a sermon preached to you every week and you're having teaching in the church and the Word is being seeded into you, you cannot excuse yourself because, by saying, I never heard the Gospel. I never heard the instruction that said I had to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I never heard the instruction that said that I don't just follow the Gospel uh, and, uh, from the point of view that says I need to be saved from hell and have an insurance policy from hell, but I need to put Lord in my vocabulary. That I need to be putting Jesus on the throne of my life and taking myself off and putting Jesus on the throne of my life. You can't say, if you've been going to church for any length of time, that that has not been shown you. And so, if we want to be following God, if we want to be knowing what God has for us, if we want to know the will of God, then we start to read the Bible for ourselves. And then we start to have questions because it usually throws up questions. I remember when I was first saved, for a whole year the assistant pastor came around my house every week and answered probably five or ten questions every time he came. Because all the time I'm reading, I'm, I'm trying to learn and uh, I haven't been a Christian all my life, so this is something that's new to me. And um, I've heard what the world says, and now I'm hearing what God says. And so it often throws up questions in my mind. And, you know, what happens here and what happens there? So I start to find out the will of God. You know, one of the things I remember saying to my assistant pastor was that, yeah, well, God helps those who help themselves. And he said, well, actually, not quite that way, but um, I understand what you're saying, but... You know, God helps those who, who serve him. God, like Moses, helps those who serve him. You know, God helps those who help themselves is an old saying that thieves used to use. <laughs> so that told you where I was. <laughs> um, that was part of my philosophy. I thought, well, it must be okay, you know. Robbing the rich to give to the poor. No, but seriously... Um, you know, we make light of these things, but at the end of the day, if I know God's will, I don't have to forever be sitting there praying, Lord, show me your will, Lord, show... I've got it here. He's already sent me a letter. I know what it is. I know what God's will is. I know inside what God's will is. And the longer I'm studying God's word, the more I know his will, the more I can apply his word to my life. That's his will in my life. The more I can apply to my life, the more I'm in his will, the more I feel his presence, the more I build a relationship with him, the more I don't have to always question everything I do. You know, because I come across Christians all the time that won't move a muscle unless God says so. 
Well, there's a difference between being not being in God's presence and, and God not being with me and not wanting to step outside of that. That's one thing. But not wanting to do anything for God or to do anything in, in obedience to God, like, for example, a husband or a wife that says, I'm not going to do what's right in this situation, even though I know what it says in Ephesians and lots of other places about how I should be in my relationship, to not want to do that because I can just sit and say, no, I'm praying about this because I'm super spiritual and I can pray about the will of God on my life and say, I'm waiting on God. Well, how godly is that? But it's not really, is it? Because we're not really waiting on God. What we're doing is copping out. Because God's told us what to do. And if we know what God tells us to do in all the situations in our lives, if you've got a situation going on in your life right now, something God is saying, I want you to do something about this, and you're going, well, I'll wait on God. (laughs) I'll, I'll just wait on God, and when God tells me, I'll move then you're not being obedient. You're not listening to his word. You're not listening to what he's telling you. You're not in the will of God. Instead of being what you think is spiritual and in the will of God, you're actually outside of the will of God. Because he's already told you what to do. He's told you how to be with other people. He's told you not to slander people. He's told you in Matthew 18 how to deal with things when people hurt you or upset you, that you go to your brother and tell them their fault directly. He's given you those kind of instructions. He's told us how to be. So we know that we have to, uh, that, that we need to go out and, and tell people about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. So if we know these things, then we need to just do them, rather than keep waiting in a little holy huddle and praying about things that are already given us as instructions. So I think that's a cop-out. But this is the person here that he spoke to at this particular time, and he's, he's really pleased with Cyrus. His right hand I have held. Is God holding your right hand? Do you feel that you're in a place where you feel that God is holding your right hand? Is he right there with you all the time? Do you feel his presence with you? Because if you don't, something's not quite right in your life. Something's not happening that should be happening. That's the whole point of that message. As far as I'm concerned, this message today is about God's presence with you. About giving the things to God that are God's. Being what God wants you to be. And so we come through to the new...